Yeah. Uh, so you could have just said uh, the class from the beginning, Ahmed. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu rasulullah. Tonight is the 8th night of Rajab 1444, and it's the 29th of January 2023. And it's now the 60th class of first correct your aqidah. Barakallahu uh, Sheikh. So what we have been doing in the last classes, we're talking about the aqidah corrected, first you corrected your aqidah, from which we talked about the iman, and we talked about the iman in Allah Azza wa Jal, and the angels and all of that. We talked about the signs of the resurrection. We started talking about as well paradise, and then we talked about the hellfire. And the more we discover about the hellfire, the more the person will be scared that he will be making his best to save himself from hell. And we have said in the last class that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about those people who will be thrown in the hellfire, that they will be there continuously. So this hellfire will not decrease in terms of heat wise. Allah Azza wa he said, فَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ That the punishment will not be decreased. وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ And they will not, Jazakallah. And they will not be as well given, Barakallah Fiqh, hell. Also this, this adab, it will not stop. إِنَّ الْمُجْرِمِينَ فِي عَذَابِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ لَا يُفَتَّرُ عَنْهُمْ that it will not decrease. Wahum fihi They're going to be there forever. Also, Allah really described the hellfire, adabun alim, severe torment. And also, He said, adabun muhin. This is disgraceful punishment, a punishment that will humiliate. Walahu adabun muhin. Also, He described it as galil, harsh. Thumma nataruhum ila adabin galil. Galil means very harsh, very tough. Also, it is kabir. And he who does wrong amongst you, we will give him a punishment of a big adab. Also, it is abiding, sticking to you. Verily, the punishment of the fire is to be sticking to the person. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is very hot. قال وذوق عذاب الحريق أم taste the punishment of the extreme heat also it has تغيير which means it like us have a when the person he is enraged and he will sound some sort of sound of enragement the same thing with the fire it has it has something that would terrify the person you know like the fire has got a sound of uh, which has like a, a shahiq and zafir taking the breath out and taking the breath in, but with a loud noise. And this punishment of the fire, it will even melt everything in it. On top of the head, there will be the hellfire poured on top of them. And whatever is in their belly, it will be melting. And also the skin. Not only that, every time the skin is to be uh, toasted and to be uh, burnt, then they, Allah Azza wa Jal will give them more skin in order to taste the punishment as we have said before. Every time their skin is well done, بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ We have given them uh, another skin in order to taste the punishment. And we have said, if you remember the last time, that the source of feeling is in the skin. After the skin, there is no feeling. And that's been said to us a long time ago before we have discovered this very recently. And also we said that this punishment or this fire, it will basically burn the skin of the face. Also he said will, it will also toast the faces. Also, it will surround them. It will surround them. It is all the way around them. Also, the punishment, it will increase. For every group, they will have a punishment which is double. Now, there is also on top of this thing that we have mentioned last time, the punishment which is to do with the nafs. A punishment that... These help people in the hellfire not going to be toast the taste the punishment of the physical one, but also the punishment of the depression, that the uh, humiliation and disgrace that these people are going to take by being punished in a way to humiliate them. They will be pushed and shoved into the hellfire. So they will be dragged and put into their faces. They will be thrown in a way which is humiliate them. 
amattana thnatayni wa ahyaytana thnatayni fa'tarafna bidunni Allah Jalla said you have made us to die twice and you have made us to be alive twice we confess with our sins this confession that's not going to help them whatsoever they could confess but they will be into the hell hellfire dhalikum bi annahum idha du'i Allah that is if Allah is to be called on his own wahda qal kafartum you will disbelieve walaw ruddu la'adu liman huwa an also Allah Jalla said in another surah if they to be sent back to the life, they will do the same thing, which is the same kufr. So the people of the far are screaming, and there is nobody is going to be helping them. Allah really said, وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا رَبَّنَا They will be screaming in it. They will say, oh Lord, أَخْرِجْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلْ Let us do something, another act, another deed, which we did not do before, something which is not kufr, something to do with the imam. But Allah Azza wa Jal, he will tell them, then we give you life, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرُكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَا نَتَذَكَّرَ Then we give you a span of life that you could really pay heed and contemplate and know that you are wrong. Also, they will be said to them, فَذُوقُوا بِمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا إِنَّا نَسِيْنَاكُمْ For a taste in this day, the punishment of what you have been doing, and that is the day that you're going to be recompensed for your evil deed, Verily, we're going to forget you from our mercy. And taste the punishment of the eternal fire that, that is a recompense for what you've been doing. So Allah will leave them in this punishment. And also, this is what means if nisyan. Means nisyan means you forget them. That means you will leave them there forever. Also, there will be a dialogue taking place between Allah Azza wa and the disbelievers. Also, between the disbelievers themselves, the people of the hellfire will have a dialogue. Also, there will be a dialogue between the boss and the one who's been bossed, the one who is the person who is leader and the one who's been led. These things are going to be talking about. Prophet Sallallahu he said in the hadith we have mentioned a long time ago that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, when the day of Raja Rasul takes place, Adhana Mu'adhin, a caller will call that let um, every ummah to follow whatever they used to worship. So there is nobody going to be staying except that he will be following his God. So those who are worshipping the idols and those who are the ones who are worshipping the statues, they will be falling into the fire until the ones who are left, the ones who are worshipping Allah alone, whether they are righteous or they are evildoers. And also there will be some left from the people of the book, Christian and Jews. So he will, Allah Azza will come to the people of the Jews. Well, who you've been worshipping? They will say, you've been worshipping Uzair, the son of Allah. They would be said to them, you have lied. Allah did never take a wife, nor he took a child. What do you want? They would say, we are thirsty. Oh Lord, give us to, so we could drink. So it will be said to them, that is, you're going to go to hellfire. So they will be gathered and will be thrown into the fire, one on top of one another. Then it will be the Christian term. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he would say to them, what did you used to worship? They would say, Jesus, peace be upon him. What is Isa alayhi salam? As a God, they would say, it be said to them that you have lied. Allah Azza wa Jal did not take a wife, nor he took a child. So what do you want? They say the same thing as the Jews, but Allah Azza wa Jal, he will throw them into the fire, one on top of each other. As I said, Allah Azza wa Jal will have a dialogue with these people who are kuffar, and there will be a reply from them, and a reply from the Lord Almighty. Alam takun ayati tutla alaykum fakuntum biha tukadhibum. It will be said to them. By the Almighty, by the angel, didn't the verses of Allah been recited upon you and you've been belying those ayat? What do they reply, reply upon? Allah Azza wa Jal, they will say, Rabbana ghalabat alayna shikwatuna wa kunna qawman dhalin. Verily, our richness or our wretchedness or our evil had been overcoming us and we were misguided people. Rabbana akhrijna minha. Oh Lord, make us to get out of the hell, get out of the hell fire. Fa'in udna fa'inna dhalin. If you go back to the deeds and the evil things that you used to do, then we are wrongdoers. What Allah would reply upon them, qal ikhsa'u fiha wa la tukalimu. Disgrace and be there forever and do not talk to me. So they used to take the mick out of the believers. They used to write in the, you know, in the tabloids and all of that, the social medias we're going to see. So those people who have been taking the mick out of the, and scorn the believers, they're going to taste the punishment. It will be said to them, إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِي Verily, there is a group of my slaves. يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَرْحَمْنَا أَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ 
فَاتَّخَذْتُمُوهُمْ سِخْرِيَّةً Those kuffar who had taken those people who call upon Allah, they would say, O Lord, for, o Lord forgive us. O Lord, give, have us mercy, mercy upon us. You are the best of the mercifuls. And those kuffar, they used to take the mick out of them. They used to scorn at them. So what is that thing that made them to scorn the believers? This hatred in their heart made them to forget the Lord and made them to take the mick and laugh onto those who are close. Companions of the Almighty Azza wa Jal. Inni jazaytuhum al-yawma bima sabaru annahum hum al-faizun. Allah says, those are the ones who have been patient and been enduring my ibadah and worshipping me. I will give them the supreme success, which is Jannah. Then he will talk to the people of the helper. Qal kam labithum fil ard. Adada sinin. They would say to them, how long you have been staying in this land, in this, in this dunya? So Allah said, they will say, We have been staying in this land, maybe a day or so. Ask the ones who count. Allah would respond to them, You have, you spent just little, just little in this life. So you have actually uh, have uh, given priority to what is not going to be existing. It's not going to be staying. And that is the dunya onto the, give the preference onto the thing which is going to be lasting. And that is the uh, Jannah. So Allah he will disgrace them and make them in depression on top of their punishment. And that is by uh, say, making a scandal of them on the day of resurrection, saying how bad they were in front of everybody. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he gave us this dua as believers to say, Rabbana, innaka man nara faqad Zayta, O Lord, whom you have put into the helper, you have given him a disgrace. That means we're asking Allah, don't disgrace us, don't show of us, don't make us unto front of the people and expose us. So that is because of the wrath of Allah and also the angels on top of them. And there will be no helpers for this for those who are wrongdoers. So those are the ones. Are now today who are the bosses, they have army, they have weapons. On the day of resurrection, they will have no help. Allah says he will have no helpers, no army to help him. Those are the ones who are tyrant and they are putting zulm upon the Muslims, the ones who are disgracing the people. Allah Azza wa Jal, he will put them in a very ultimate disgrace. Allah Jal, he said, and that is on the, on the Surah of Ibrahim, on the tongue of Ibrahim alayhi salam, wala tukhzini yawma yubathun, do not disgrace me on the day that you resurrect people. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would expose those who are traitors. In the hadith of the Prophet sallam, he said, for every traitor, there will be a flag stuck to his next to his bum. Next to his bum, that is the bad place to show that he was a person that he used to trait or to be a traitor and to betray. So Allah's messenger, he said, every person and the biggest betrayer and the biggest traitor is the one who is being a boss or a leader for a group of people from the ummah, yet he betrays them. So from those people who will get sort of punishment, not the physical one, also the punishment of the psychology, the punishment of the depression, also that Allah Azza wa Jal will not look at them. So the Prophet, the Allah Azza said, Kalla, innahum mahjubun. They will be taken away from your Lord. So this punishment that they will not be able to see their Lord is another punishment, not just a physical fire, but Allah Azza wa Jal, he will not give them his faith to look at them. Not only that, he will not respond to their dua. La tad'u al-yawma thumura wahira. Do not call upon destruction today in the his father. One, one. You know, call Allah to wad'u thumura and kathira. Call for destruction Allah. Walau tara idhi al-mujrimuna nakisu ru'usihim iddarab. Yaqulun. Behold, when you see that the, the, the evildoers, they are putting their head down in the... Uh, when they're beside or in front in the presence of their Lord, what they are saying, Rabbana Abu Sarna wa Samiana. Oh Lord, we had hearing, we were as well seeing, Farjina Na'mal Salih, and just send us back. We will do good deeds. Now we believe what was the answer. Taste the punishment of this day because we are not. Because you have forgotten this day. You did not pay attention to the hereafter. So taste the punishment for that. Those angels will not have any mercy upon these Zalimun. And it will not respond to their screaming because of the punishment. Not only that, 
the Allah Azza wa Jal document for us in the Quran that we, the totally the hellfire people, they will ask the angels to ask Allah to decrease this punishment. Call unto your Lord, O angels, that He would decrease just one day from the punishment. So the angel will respond, Did your messengers used to come to you with the proofs, with the ayat, with the Quran, with the Injil? They said, Yes. Call for your call and supplication. It will not help. The call of the kuffar, it is all, all of it is being misguided. It's not going to be looked at. It's going to be neglected. And that is why when they go to the guardian of the hellfire, Malik, Ya Malik, liyaqdi alayna rabbuk. They will call unto your Lord to make us die. We don't want to taste the punishment. He would say, no, you're going to be alive forever, tasting the punishment. So this is on top of a humiliation, on top of a humiliation. From the humiliation, the angels, when they are pouring the punishment on top of those people who are in the hellfire, they will say, look. Taste the punishment, you kafir. You are the Aziz. Al-Aziz Al-Kareem. Al-Aziz Al-Kareem, that means the one who is mighty, noble, and the Kareem who is as well generous. How can be he Al-Aziz and Kareem, yet he's a criminal? This is to show the humiliation. Okay, you thought you are, mashallah, mighty and noble in this dunya. You thought that you are the person who is generous. Well, taste the punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also, from the humiliation of this fire, he would say, يَوْمَ يُسْحَبُونَ فِي النَّارِ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ Behold, when they're going to be dragged into the fire, on their faces, that is on top of their punishment. يُعْرَفُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ بِسِيمَاهُمْ They will, mujrimin, they're criminals, they will know by their looks, by their forehead. قَالْ فَيُؤْخَذُ بِالنَّوَاصِي وَالْأَقْدَامِ He will be taken by the forehead and the feet and will be thrown in the fire. And this is a punishment of humiliation. قَالْ لَنَسْفَعَمْ بِالنَّاصِيَ So they will be also Allah Azza wa Jal also he will punish the forehead in a way that we, you know your, your pride is in there. When Allah puts you to your face, the pride is gone. Now we're coming to the dialogue between the people of Jannah and the people of the Fah. On the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that there will be a dialogue, just like the dialogue between Allah and the kuffar, and between the kuffar and the kuffar, between the kuffar and the angel, there will be also between the people of paradise and the people of hellfire. And behold, when the dwellers of paradise called upon the dwellers of the fire, and we have found what Allah promises true, and that is Jannah. قال فهل وجدتم ما وعدكم ربكم حقا؟ Did you find what Allah had promised you from the punishment? قالوا نعم. They said yes. So the people of the Jannah call on the people of the fire, telling them we have found the recompense, which is Jannah. We have found the delight. Did you find what you've been promised from the punishment? So these people of the hellfire now gonna ask. Uh, the people of Jannah to give them some of that water and the food that they could see in Jannah. Give us from that water of the Jannah. Give us from that food of the Jannah. The Jannah people will respond to them. Allah made these two things a haram. The water of the Jannah and the food of the Jannah to be haram upon those who are evildoers, upon those who are criminals, upon those who are disbelievers. So those Allah who had deprived them from the delight of the Akhirah. Those are the ones who used to take the mick and scorn at the believers. Now the believers are taking the mick out of them. <inaudible> Behold, when the criminals, they take a laugh onto the believers. They are laughing. When they pass, <inaudible> and when the believers pass by the kuffar, they start winking each other. Look, look, look how short his dress. Uh, his thobe is above his ankle. <inaudible> and those kafara, these uh, disbelievers, the ones who are scoring at the believers, when they go to the people, they start making jokes about the believers. And when they see the believer, they will say, definitely they are misguided. But yet those go far, they will not be said to be a watchers over the believers. Today, on the day of resurrection, the believers will laugh at the ones who are disbelievers. They will be on couches looking, looking where? To the face of Allah. Where the kuffar be recompensed for what they used to do in this dunya. So today, in the day of resurrection, we will laugh at them. Today, in this dunya, you laugh at us. 
But those are the ones who are drawing caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi humiliating the Prophet of Allah, burning the Quran, and all of those sticking the mic out of the Muslim. This is going to be their day on the day of resurrection. Look at them. And subhanAllah, one day I was, actually yesterday I was looking at the YouTube and seeing those people who had been to some of the Muslim countries, which is Qatar. And one of this person, he had been uh, showing how good these people are good. And one, A'udhu Billah from the Shayateen, he's showing that how he was kissing his girlfriend in Qatar and how he's eating ham in Qatar and how he's drinking wine in Qatar and he's showing us, subhanAllah. Huh. Then Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, on the day of resurrection, they will, be, they will be given their punishment. We will be laughing at them. So they laugh at us, we will laugh at them on the day of resurrection. But be patient, yet one. And they should not be as well dragging you to be enraged, do something that the whole ummah will suffer from. You should not be doing that. You just be uh, just like the Prophet ﷺ at his time, in the time of Mecca. What were they used to do? People used to do more than that. They used to put not just uh, Quran and to be burnt, where Quran was not being done at that time, the whole of it, but they used to put who and placenta on top of the neck of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So we have to be patient. Now, let's talk about the dialogue between the shaitan and his followers. So there will be dialogues as well between the shaitan and the ones who had responded to him and followed his call. وَقَالَ shaitan, And behold, when the shaitan, he said, لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ When the matter is being decreed, إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ Allah promised you the true promise. قَالَ وَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَقْتُكُمْ Yet, I gave you a promise that if you do this sin, if you do this whims and desire, you will be you will be the good. I have done this promise to you, but I did not fulfill my promise. Allah gave you the promise, which is how. If you do good, you go to Jannah. I gave you a promise. If you do the sins, you're going to be on top of the people. I did not have any authority upon you. Illa except. I called upon you. You responded. You followed. You accepted. Do not blame me. Blame yourselves. Oh, Shaitan Iblis is going to dissociate himself from you. You followed me. I did not put gun into your head and follow me. I did not say that. I can't have the gun. I don't have any authority. I just made whispering to you. I made it beautiful to you. And you followed. So don't blame me. Blame yourself. You're not going to be, you're not, I'm not going to help you. You're not going to help me. I'm going to be in hell. You're not going to help me. You're going to be in hell. I'm not going to help you. I have this belief of what you have associated me from before. Subhanallah. If they please, I'll say, I've got nothing to do with your shirk. Those are the ones who are zalimin. They will have adab, alim. Severe torment also. So the shaitan, ya'iduhum wa yumannihim, wa ma ya'iduhum shaitanu illa wa Shaitan always promised the people, and he always give them hope, but the hope he's giving them is deception, as Allah Azza wa Jal, he said. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he in this, uh, the, the Almighty says to us that he, the, the person who had followed the shaitan, he would start hate themselves. They will start disliking themselves. Why did they follow the shaitan? But Allah Azza will call upon them, لَمَقْتُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ مِنْ مَقْتِكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ Very the hatred of Allah to you is more than the hatred of yourself to yourself. So Allah Azza wa Jal here is documenting for us in the Quran that the people of the hellfire, they will start hating themselves. Listen to these verses in Surah Al-Sajda and Surah Ibrahim. Um, on Surah Ghafir as well. You've been called to Iman, yet you disbelieve that they will be called again. Send us back, we will be, inshallah, we'll be doing good. It's kuffar. Allah responded to them. If we wish, we could have just given every soul the guidance. That means everybody will be guided. And but Allah Azza wa Jal, He had gave us hellfire and paradise. You choose. And then the third time, he, they said, "Rabbana akhirna ila ajrin qarib. Nujibi da'watak wa rattabi'ul rusul. O Lord, give us a respite. Give us another chance. We will follow your call and we will follow the Prophet." So Allah replied upon them, "Awalam takunu aqsamtum min qabl, ma lakum min zawal." Didn't you give an, an oath before that they will you will be eternal, that they will you will never be dead, you will never be returning to me? Was akantum fi masakin ladin adalamu anfusahum, and you have lived in the dwellings of those people who wronged themselves. What abayyan lakum kaifa faalna bihim, and you knew what happened to them, people of Ad, people of Samud. What happened to them? Wa darabna lakum al-amthal. We have said parables and examples. 
examples for you. They will call upon their Lord. Rabbana, akhirna, aw akhrijna na'mal saliha. Oh Lord, get, make us to go out of the hellfire. Go back to the dunya in order to do good deeds. Ghayr alladhi kunna na'mal. Beside the one that we used to do from the evil. Let us just give them another chance. Allah will give them as a reply. Then we give time for you. That is enough for the person to remember. Ja'akumul Quran. Quran came to you. The Prophet came to you. The messengers came to you. Even that gray hair, as a reminder, you're getting old. Now, maybe the people have a hope of the hellfire. So they said, Rabbana, ghalabat alayna shikwatuna, wa kunna qawman dhali. Verily, O Lord, our wretchedness, our evil had overcome us. And we were misguided people. Rabbana akhrijna minha. We just give us another time. Let us go out of the hellfire. Fa'in udna, fa'in madhalimun. If we did bad, then we are wrongdoers. So Allah, he said, ikhsa'u fiha. Disgrace, be there in wala tukallimun. Don't talk to me. And that's when the hope and the supplication, all of that, it will stop. That's when they are going to be insulting and cursing one another, and the hellfire will be closed upon them, and there will be a remorse. These people will have hasra, and they will have regret. Allah talks about this. And they have got inside themselves the remorse and the regret when they saw the punishment. And it's being arbitrated between them in justice. They will not be wronged. And also Allah, he said, Allah, Allah, he would show their deeds upon them to be hasarat, remorse and regret. They will see what they have done. And this is what they, you're going to get in the hellfire. So all of that will be on top of their punishment. <laughs> now, you know, when you get into a crisis, the more people in the crisis, the more it will be easier for the people. So, for example, if an earthquake took place to one person, it will mean as not as devastating in terms of psychology if more than one person is in that devastation. The more people in the crisis, the less painful it is on the person. But this is not in the helper. You get lots of people in the helper, but none of them is going to help one another. So those people will not get benefit that there's other people that are going to be punished the same. I'm going to be punished. The other person is being punished like me. Then it's no problem. No, there will be nothing like this. This is in the dunya. Allah will not help you today. That you are uh, partners in the fire. That you are together in the fire. It's not going to help you. Because the hellfire's punishment is severe. Regardless whether you are on your own or you have other people the same thing with you. Also the people of the hellfire, they will be in very grief. And also they would say that we would have wished that we had followed the call of the Prophet وسلم, the call of the Iman. How can they from the hellfire ask for the Iman? It's too far away from them. The Prophet وسلم, he said, القيامة, the one who's gonna receive the lightest punishment in the hellfire is the one who is gonna have a piece of burning coals underneath him. Also, the Prophet وسلم, he said, the people of the people, uh, the one who is having the lightest punishment in the hellfire, he will say, it will be said to him, would you like to ransom everything on the earth just for the sake of getting away from this fire? He would say, yes, verily. Allah Jalla would say to him, I did ask you less than that. Not the whole dunya. I've asked you not to associate anything with me, but you refused, and that is your punishment. So the thing which is being required from the kuffar is something easy. Iman and amal salih. To believe in Allah and to do righteous good deeds. But he did not uh, accept that. He wanted to go and follow his whims and desire. So he had made his haram by fornication, by drinking, by eating flesh of the, per the pork and all of that. And they used cheating and killing Muslims and killing others that have been non-Muslim. They are evil doers. They satisfy themselves. Well, this is the day you're going to be punished. Now, what is the reflect of that depression that takes place in the hearts of those who are dhalimun and dhafa, even on top of their punishment? So what is the effect? Allah Azza wa Jal talks about it, that they will, number one, confess. They will say, They are going to confess, they will say, and it will be said to them, 
Uh, go away, you people of the fire. Also, they will be wishing that they are going to be turned into dust, into sand. And the person would see what he had done before he goes into the day on the day of resurrection. He would see in the day of resurrection what he has done in this dunya, and he would have just said, I wish that I am dust. I'm not a human being. Not only that, this depression will cause them to start blaming one another. And also you taking this awthan, uh, these statues, as to be loved beside Allah Azza wa Jal. Then you will make other each other, to, you are the disbeliever, you are the kafir, and you are, may Allah curse you, may Allah curse you. So they will be cursing one another. And your abode is the fire. Every time a nation goes into the fire, it will curse the one which is the one caused them to go to the fire, or the one who are made them to be followed into the fire. So they will be each ummah cursing the other ummah. Also, they will be biting not on one finger or two, on both hands. Allah he said, Behold, when the wrongdoer, he will bite onto his hand out of regret, out of remorse. Yaqul, he would say, Ya laytani takhattu ma'al rasooli sabila. I wish that I have taken the path of the messenger. I followed the prophet of Allah. Also, from that punishment of the depression, which is the effect of it on the person, they will be screaming until this, the, the tears will stop. There will be no tears except for blood. Wahum yastarikhuna fiha. And behold, when they're going to be shouting in it, and also they will have the breath, which Allah talked about, lahum fiha zafir, wahum fiha la yasma'oon. The fear that is like a breath in the fire, a sigh, I should say, maybe. So the kafir also in the hellfire, he will have a sound like a sound of a donkey. One of the scholars of the exegetes, Akrima, he said in Qatada, that he will have the sound of the donkey. So it is like breath in and breath out. It's like the donkey, they say. And also one of the, as well, scholars of the uh, ear of the followers, he said, the people of the hellfire, they will say to each other, come on. So he who had... Uh, had gone to the people of Ahl Jannah. Uh, 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 so let's just go and call upon Allah and cry. Maybe Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive us. So they will start crying, crying, and they saw that this crying will not benefit them. So he said, let's just do something else. Let's just be patient. Be patient, be patient. So they be patient. Nothing will help them. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, he would say to them, Sawa'un alayna. They would say themselves to themselves, Sawa'un alayna. Ajazi'na an sabarna. We were, either we regret. Or we be patient. We will have no way to get out. No way to have any sympathy. Allah he said, The intercession of the intercessors will not benefit them. And also they will say, We'll have no helpers and intercessors. And also they will call upon themselves, as we have said before, to be destructed. He who has been given his book from his left at the back. He will call upon destruction. That he is deemed perished. And he will be going to the hellfire. So he will call on Thubur. Why? Oh Lord, make me to die. Let me to be dust and so on and so forth. Right. Now in the hellfire, there will be no relationship. The person will dissociate himself even from the closest person from him. Whether it's a wife or a child. Whether it's a father or a mother. He will keep away from everybody. Every person is called upon himself. Mafsi, nafsi. My soul, my soul. There will be no helping on that day, whether it's of children or money, except he will come to Allah with qalb salim. Salim means pure, pure heart from the shirk, pure heart from the uh, uh, kufr. If it's pure, then this will help with the heart. So this person who's got a person who's a relative, he will be running away from him, running away from him because he, he doesn't want him to go and ask him, please help me. He's not going to help him. So he will not be able to give help to that person and that person will not be able to help him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given us this example. Darab Allahu mathalan lilladhina kafaru. Darab Allahu mathalan. Allah gave an example, a parable for those who are disbelievers. Imra'ata Nuh wa imra'ata Lut. The wife of Lut, alayhi salam, and the wife of Lut. <laughs> what will happen? Kanata tahta abdaini min ibadi. They were as wives uh, with the two slaves of Allah. And that is Nuh and Lut. They were righteous. 
They were prophets. They had betrayed. So means they betrayed them. They did not betray them as in fornication. No, no prophet's wife will fornicate. Here, the khiyana, the traitor, the treachery is that they com committed shirk. They did not help them. These prophets did not give them the greed card to be saved from the hellfire because of they are wife and husband. They had to save themselves from the hellfire. And it was said to these two women, the wife of Nuh, the wife of Lut, to go with the people of hellfire inside the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said about the criminal who is a polytheist, he said, No way they will have somebody who's a friend who will help him. And also the disbelievers' children, they will not prevail them. They will not help them on the day of resurrection. You know, in the time of battles, in the time of need, the best person you seek help from is your children. Those are the ones you produce them. They are your product. Yet those children will not help them. As Allah Azza said, Inna ladina kafaru. Those who are disbelieved, the money, the wealth, nor the children will help them whatsoever. They are going to be the fuel of the fire. This excuse and alibi that they bring, those kuffar to Allah, I did this because of this. This apology will not help. This apology may help in this dunya, but in the hereafter it will not help. They will have the disgrace and the also they will have the curse and they will have the evil abode. So the kafir, he will be wishing to ransom himself with all his relatives, including his father and mother and including his children. Now, you know that in this dunya, the person, he will do everything, you know, for his children. They do everything to help his children. He will ransom himself for his children. He will take the morsel out of his mouth to feed his child when he's a baby. And when he grows up as well, if he's a Muslim looking after him, he will as well do the same. He will give every single penny in his pocket to save him from a disease, whatever, whatever it is. So these children are looked after so much by their parents. But on the neighbor's direction, he will not give them a help. No, he will ask them for help. Help me. You throw yourself in your fire and save me. I don't care. You kill, you kill, you kill yourself in the fire and save me. Subhanallah. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, you basaruna. Allah will give them to see you basaruna. Look what's going to happen. Yawaddul mujrim. The criminal, he wishes, law yaftadi min adhabi yawmi idhin bibani. To ransom himself from the punishment on that day, even with his own children. His wife, his brother, and also all his tribe, the one who is to help them. And whatever, and whoever, and all of those who are on the earth, as long as they save them. Subhanallah. So those people, they want to have anybody to save them, regardless. So the person, subhanallah, from the kuffar, he will acknowledge on the day of resurrection that those will not help him. No, he will help them. No, they will help him. When the day of resurrection comes, when the person run away from his brother, his companion, and his mother and his father, and his wife and his children, each person will have something to preoccupy him. Each person, say, nafsi, nafsi. Okay? So one of the exegetes, he said, Ikrima, he said, a man, he would find his wife. And he would say to her, oh, wife, didn't, what type of husband I was to you in the dunya? She would say, well, you are a very good husband. And she start praising him and so on and so forth. They would say, oh, just like one little thing from you today, just one hasana. You just grant it to me. So maybe with this hasana, I will save myself from what you could see, the hellfire. She would say, well, what an easy request. But I cannot give you that. Because if I give you that, I might have some sort of not enough uh, good deeds to save self, myself from the fire. Subhanallah. So he will find his son. Oh, son, didn't you be my son? What type of father I was for you? He would say, you're a good father, looking after me and everything. Okay, well, can't you see what type of punishment I'm in? Just lend me one hasana so I could save myself from this punishment. Oh, he would say, what an easy request, Father. But if I give you this, I'm scared. I might be falling into the fire. I can't give you anything. Subhanallah. So he would be fleeing from everybody. Ibn Jarir, he says, there is nothing hatred to a person on the day of resurrection. Is not is that is more than to meet one of those who knows 
whether he's a relative or not relative, because in case he's going to ask him and he's going to say to him, no, I can't give you anything. I don't want to see my friend. I want to see him. I don't want to see my wife. She might ask me for Hassan. I'm not going to give her Hassan. I don't want to see that. Okay. Subhanallah. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he's telling us what a great loss if this person had happened to him, what we had just been talking about. Those are the ones who are proper losers. They lost their family, they lost themselves on the day of resurrection. This is the clear loss. So this clear loss is what? That they will not meet each other. They will not. So if they are from the people of the far, they will not see each other. If they are from the people, fire and Jannah, so some of them in paradise, some of the hellfire, they will not see each other. The only ones who are going to see each other, who are they? The one going to enter what? Paradise. If you enter paradise, you'll have your children. We will give you your, our offspring. But if you are, some of you in paradise, some of you in the hellfire, you can't see each other. In the hellfire, you can't see each other. You're going to be just, you're going to ask him, save myself, and just give me a little punishment. Listen, the punishment of you, he will not give you that. There will be no between them any sort of tie, subhanallah. Not only that, those close friends, you know, this in this dunya, Allah really said, Al akhillau yawma idin, ba'duhum li ba'din adaw, illa al muttaqin. Those who are akhilla, close friends to each other, on the day of resurrection, they are enemy to one another, except for those who are pious. So those are the ones who gathered together on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of resurrection, they will curse one another. Al akhillau yawma idin, so their friendship had turned into enmity on the day of resurrection, except for those who are pious. So, subhanallah, behold, on the day when the dhalim, the evil doer, will bite on both his hands, and he would say, I wish I followed the Prophet. Ya laytani lam Woe to me, I shouldn't have taken so and so as a close friend of mine. He had misguided me from the dhikr of Allah, from the verses after it came to me. And all the time, the shaitan will let you down. He will let you down in the time when you need him. He will say, I got nothing to do with you. Blame yourself, don't blame me. Allah, when he said about this person in the hellfire, he would say, Woe to me of what you have lost regarding the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who the people who are disbelieved, they wish that they have disobeyed the Prophet, they wish that they have been leveled with the land. They are nothing. So they are basically saying to Allah, I, we wish to keep away from that person who had misguided us. You are a bad companion. I wish I had between me and you what is the distance between the two east, the two horizons. I wish because he is the person who had misguided him. Now, also, there will be a dialogue between the boss and the one who's been bossed, the one who's the leader and the one who's been led, and they will be cursing with each other. So those are the ones Allah really document for us their argumentation and their dialogue. They are now huh, debating with one another in the hellfire. They will, the people who are weak, the people who are being led, they will say to the one who are arrogant, the one who are bosses, we were following you. Are you going to save us? From this punishment of the fire, at least a portion of it. The people who've been the bosses, the one who are arrogant. All of us going to be the helper. All of us going to be punished. Subhanallah. So those who are the bosses, they will say to them, "Well, we are all together in the helper." And also, as we said, all of them became to Allah Azza wa Jal, the weak and the one who are strong. The arrogant and the one who is not arrogant. The ones who are weak said to the one who are arrogant, We used to be following. Are you going to save us from the punishment of the fire that Allah imposed upon us? They would say, Subhanallah. They say that if Allah gave us guidance, we'll have guided you. Whatever we do, whatever they be patient, 
or we're going to be uh, crying, then we're going to have no getting away from this fire. So this is their alibi, which is, I could say, a naive alibi. Because they said, Law hadan Allah, if Allah gave us guidance, we will give you guidance. So they are taking the qadr as an alibi. And no way they're going to have this qadr as an alibi for them. Because uh, you can't say that if Allah guides us. You are the one who chose the misguidance. You did not choose the guidance. Allah Azza wa will give you the guidance if you chose to be guided. So those are the ones who are basically following those who are leaders. They're not going to have an alibi before their Lord to say that these are the ones who misguided us. You punish them, O oh Lord, but don't punish us. No. Allah said, when the Dalimun who are evildoers, they're going to be stopped before the Lord. They are swearing at each other. Now they're talking, sorry, uh, they were talking to each other. One is saying something and the other one replying. What are they talking? The ones who are weak, they will say to the ones who are arrogant, had it been for you, we would have been believers. You are the one who made us disbelievers. Huh? The ones who are now arrogant, they said to the one who have followed them, We did not block you, hinder you. We did not be an obstacle between you and the guidance. You are the ones who are criminals already. That's why you chose to be criminals. And the ones who are weak, they said to the ones who are arrogant, that you have been commanded us to give deities with the Almighty and also to be disbelievers in Allah. But very, you've been plotting to do that. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He says to them, If Allah he says, they have now had gone this with this regret inside themselves, when they have seen the punishment, and we have put the fetters in their necks, which is the one that you drag the person who's a prisoner, and they're going to be dragged to the hellfire. Why? As a recompense of what they used to do. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us this, that these people who are being following, the ones who are arrogant, they are going to be dissociating themselves. Oh, sorry, they're going to put the blame onto the ones who are disbelievers, the ones who are the bosses. But the boss would dissociate themselves from them, from them and saying, we did not call you. You are the one already you are evil. So and behold, when the ones who have been followed dissociate themselves with the ones who had followed them, and no relationship, no friendship, nothing. If we had just another chance, those the ones who are weak, we just had another chance. We could just dissociate ourselves from them. كذلك يريهم الله أعمالهم حصرات عليهم وما هم بخارجين من النار. Allah shows them their deeds are to be remorse and regrets upon them. They will not come out of the fire. So those are the things that made these people now to worship singers and to worship idols and to worship their whims and desire. You'll find people, subhanAllah, he loves his person to the point of death and to the point of disbelieving in everything. You'll find these people loving singers and so on. SubhanAllah, you will say, if the singer so-and-so dies, I will kill myself. This is what happened. So your singer is not going to help you, the one you died for him. That person you have died for him is not going to help you if he's a football player, whatever it is, is not going to help you. So these people who are the miskeen, the weak, they will say, Rabbana atihim min al Oh Lord, give them double punishment. Those are the bosses, those are the ones, those are the ones who are our people who are the elite, give them double punishment. Rabbana atihim min al -adab. And curse them a big curse. Put them in the curse, oh Lord. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he talks about this cursing taking place between the boss and between the one who follow them. Go into nations who had been before you, from jinn and mankind, in the hellfire. Every time a nation comes in, it will curse the one who came after. When all of them, they were in the hellfire, that the last one, it would say to the first one, Rabbana haula yadaluna. Those are the ones who have misguided us. Give them a double punishment from the helper. Qal, Allah, he would say, Each one will have a double. But you don't. 
So all of them are going to have double punishment. وَقَالَتْ أُولَاهُمْ لِأُخْرَاهُمْ فَمَا كَانَ لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ فَضْلٍ فَذُوقُ الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْسِبُونَ All of those dialogues taking place between the boss and the one who's being followed. Subhanallah. Allah will, he will tell all of these nations who had discarded one another, whether they are from the jinn, whether they're on the mankind, to enter the hellfire. طيب. Also, the hellfire now inside themselves, not just the bosses, the normal people, they will be also having a dialogue. When a, a, a group of people comes into the hellfire, what is, you know, when you come into a group now, somebody would say, Salamu alaikum. What is the tahiyya of the people of the fire when they enter the fire and they see me come into the fire? These are people coming now, entering the fire. No, they are not welcome. They will, so the ones who enter and the ones who are inside the fire, they will see this group and say, no, no welcome for you. So the ones who enter will say, no, no, you are the one. You are the one who caused us to come to the hellfire. You're what an evil about. That, oh Lord, who had given us this, or who had given us this uh, path of destruction and who had misled us, give him a double from the hellfire. So the people of the hellfire insulting one another, they're violating against each other, they're cursing one another, subhanallah, and they are disbelieving in one another. Who the one who had made us to be miscarriages, give him a double of the punishment. But Allah will give double to all of them. So they gonna be blaming one another. They will come to each other and follow one another, and they will. So those shayateen as well, they will say, you used to come from our right, you used to talk to us, you used to misguide us, you used to. Huh? But Allah Azza wa Jal, He's talking about, he, He's telling us as well. The shaytan said, well. We did not have any authority upon you. We did not put you under gun. You are the one who followed. The punishment of our Lord, we deserve it. So when they are in the fire, they acknowledge that they deserve the punishment which Allah is going to give them, which is double for the ones who the ones who are the boss and the ones who are being followers. All of them, they will be. They are partners in this punishment <laughs> this is how we punish the people who are evil doers i know that i have done a lot with this but i need to make sure that you understand what type of punishment that the person would receive in the people in the hellfire and also that this punishment of the fire not just for the mankind but also for the jinn the jinn will also enter the fire <laughs> just like the human being will enter the fire. So all of them will get the hellfire. Now, the people who are muwahideen, monotheistic, but they've done some sins and Allah willed for them to be punished. Where is it to be punished? Is it a different fire? We've answered this question before. We said it is the same fire. They're going to be in the same fire. So the people from the major sins, whom Allah will for them not to be forgiven, they will be punished according to their sin, but they will not be eternal. So the cross of common fire between them is that, that the fire of the believer is not going to be eternal, where the fire of the disbeliever is going to be eternal. So the fire of the believer who had committed zina, fornication, killed someone, huh? and if Allah will for it to be punished, then it will be, or the one who devour the river, then it will be for a particular time, but definitely he will come out because of his tawheed and his monotheism, regardless of his sins, as long as it is not shirk in Allah Azza wa Jal. <coughs> so, as for the shirk minor, yes, you will be punished, but you will be forgiven. But major shirk will not be forgiven. Five, the people of the uh, fire and the, uh, and, and the, uh, the uh, sorry, the, the, um, uh, now we're coming to the people of the Muahideen. We say that Mahdab, Madhab Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, any person from the monotheistic, if he does a sin, he's under the will of Allah. He either be punished and he's going to be punished temporarily or he will be forgiven. It is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has got the will for that. Right. Now, after this, alhamdulillah, we say that the people of the hellfire, they differ in the way that they punish. So even if you are warada, you muahid, monotheistic, or a disbeliever, the punishment differs according to the sin that you have done. So even if the people of the hellfire, they are eternal, they're going to have different. So for example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had said regarding those people who are uh, extremely 
uh, oh, sorry, they're going to be in the light fire. He said, Inna ahwana ahli nari adaban. The one who's going to receive the weakest or the lightest punishment in the fire, whether it's a Muslim wahid sinner or it's a Muslim or it's a kafir, <laughs> like Abu Talib. <laughs> a pieces of two coals underneath his feet where his brain is boiling from them like the water boils. Allah Azza wa he talked about this regarding this punishment, which is you know, differs from one person to another. He said, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ زِدْنَاهُمْ عَذَابًا فَوْقَ الْعَذَابِ بِمَا كَانُوا يُفْسِدُونَ That is the one who had disbelieved in Allah and they blocked and hindered the people from the path of Allah will increase their punishment on top of their punishment. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُدُوًا وَعَشِيَةً The hellfire, they will be exposed to it day and night. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ And on the day of resurrection, Allah will say, أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ Make the people of Fir'aun to be in the most severe punishment. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ Those who are hypocrites are in the bottom of the hellfire. So we have a hadith to show us that the punishment is not the same. So Allah is the most just. He will not, for example, treat the one who is disbeliever, yet is good to the Muslims and good to the people, like the one who's a disbeliever, yet he is an evildoer. He is a shaitan himself. <laughs> Ill-mannered and all of that, they will not be the same. Allah Azza will give each one the punishment that he deserves. Prophet he said, in the nasi al al-musawwirun, the one who make images, they're going to have the most serious punishment, whether they are from the disbelievers in the eternal hellfire or the ones from the believers whom Allah will for them to be punished. Allah Azza wa also, is, the last message he said, that the one who had been as well uh, this, this, criticized, and because of his criticized individually, he criticized not that man, he will criticize the whole tribe. Also, he will receive a severe punishment as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said. So Allah Azza wa Jal, also he had said that those people who are going to be in the hellfire, they're going to be in, as I said, in terms of uh, punishment-wise, they're going to be different from one person to another. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked us about Iblis. Iblis, this is the one who's going to be the severest punishment the most person will severe get the severest punishment is iblis himself prophet sallallahu talked about that and he said he will be in the helper he's the one who is misguiding everybody after iblis there is fir'aun <coughs> allah he said he had led his people to the helper he had led his people to the helper this fir'aun after fir'aun the polytheists from the males and the female who are called to the helper. Allah he said, Wala Do not marry those other polytheists until they believe. Wala mu'mina and a believing woman, female, is khayrun mi mushrika. Better than a kufar, even if you like her money, like her face. Wala mushrikin. And do not give your Muslim women to the mushrikeen. That means do not marry your daughter or something like to a person who is not Muslim. Hatta yu'minu, until they believe. Wala abdul mu'min, and a believing person, khayrun min mushrik, better than a disbeliever, even walau a'jabakum, even if you are in love with him because he's got money or a good face or whatever, or a good manner. Ula'ika yad'una ila nar, because those kuffar whom you're going to marry, they're going to be calling people to the helper. Wallahu yad'u ila al-jannah, and Allah calls to the jannah. Ula'ika yad'una nar, that means they will call you to do the acts that will make you to the helper. Go to the hell and Allah calls you to go to Jannah and also to have forgiveness by His uh, uh, by His permission. So أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى لي ولكم أن نكون من الذين قد استمعوا القول فاتبعوا أحسنه وأسأل سبحانه وتعالى أن يقينا عذاب جهنم وأن يقينا النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل من قول وعمل إياكم ودعاة أهل النار be aware of those people who call to the hell as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Dua'atun ala abuwa bi jahannam, man ajabahum ilayha qadahuhu fiha. Hadith Hudayfa, the one who calls to the hellfire, uh, call to the acts of the hellfire, e, 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 any person who responds to their call, they will throw him in the fire. This is the time. This is the time, ya khwari. There are lots of people now in social media, misguiding people, subhanallah. If you go to the internet, like you're going into ocean, be careful. You might click into a website and that website takes you to hellfire. So, as I said, as thabata ala deenit to be, steadfast on his religion and if you have any question regarding what you heard please go ahead question regarding hellfire it will have the priority hellfire that means how to save yourself from hellfire so if you have a question regarding hellfire please put your finger up whether it's from the zoom or uh, uh, please if you have question from the zoom as well hellfire question uh, question put your hands up if you haven't got post on yourself okay anybody here
Fine, we'll go to the Zoom. If anybody's got the Alpha Faisal. No, you got one here? I didn't see you. Put your finger up. I can't see you. My glasses. Is the nar going to be finished? Is the nar going to be finished? The nar, the hellfire, is not going to be finished. Any person who had said that is mistaken. If he's from the people of, like the Mu'tazila, he is, of course, deviant. But if he's from the people whom we think they are from the people of Haq, like Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he had said a word which might have a hint of saying that the hellfire will cease. That means it will be, it will be by the fish. No, it, the hellfire we have said before is eternal. So the punishment is eternal. It's not going to be finished. So there's not going to be like uh, Allah Azza wa He will stop the fire and it will kill all his kuffar. They will happy. They'll be happy. So whoever said that from the ones who are from Ahl Sunnah, he made a mistake. Uh, and this is from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at is Haqida. In our Aqida books, we say, Wal Naru wal Jannah la yafnayan. Paradise and hellfire do not perish. They are out there forever. So there's no difference between Khalidina Fiha and Khalidina Fiha. There is no difference between Khalidina and Khalidina Fiha Abada. No, there's no difference between that. Because there is as well Khalidina Fiha Abada. There is one verse or three verses of all the Quran, but that doesn't make difference, Yaqwani. Even Allah Azza wa Jalla, He talked about the one who kills another believer, Khalid and Fiha. He said, to abide there forever. Uh, but here it doesn't mean Khalid and Fiha, that means forever. It could be for, for example, for time, and then you would go out of the Hellfire to paradise. Okay. Now, we have to understand the Quran in the light of the Sunnah, not here in Sona's Hawaii. Any other question? Okay. Uh, during, during when they had the Shah Miraj, that uh, uh, he saw like, people in like, burning in hell, like Muslim women were. But my question is, like, how did he see that? So, the Prophet, when he had made the Isra'a al-Mi'raj, he had given the glimpse of passing the low tree, and he has been seen in paradise, and he even been given the opportunity to look into the hellfire. <coughs> and that's why when he gave, came back and he said to the women during the Eid Khutbah, he said, I looked into the hellfire and most of, say, most of the people are the inhabitants of hellfire. And not just this question, other question where you see, for example, that the Prophet saw a man in the hellfire who has been in the river. Every time he goes to the, uh, the, the beach and then there will be a person there, he will give him a stone, uh, okay? And uh, there will be a punishment, which is Hadith Jabir, hadith, the long Hadith, Jabir Musamur. We say that this is can be resolved very easily. First of all, the punishment hasn't been taken yet. Hasn't. There's nobody yet in the hellfire physically. But there are souls already. So there are souls in paradise and there are souls in the hellfire. So those people who have died, whether they are going to be punished, they're going to be in hellfire, or they're going to be delighted, they're going to be in paradise. There are souls already. Okay. So when the Prophet ﷺ talked about this man who had gathered his sons and he said, when I die, burn me, take my ashes, put half in the land, half of it in the sea. But if Allah will to gather me, and he had been able, he had been able to put me back, who punished me a punishment, he never punished anybody before like it. So his sons were faithful to his will. They burnt him after his death, put his ashes half over the land and half over in the sea to make it difficult on Allah to gather him. That's according to the man's mentality. He's, 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 he's ignorant. So Allah well, he willed for this. So he, Allah has given us a full taste was going to take place. He hasn't taken place in terms of soul and body-wise. This person, he's been summoned by Allah, and Allah is going to ask him, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Allah is going to ask him, why did you do this, my slave? The slave would say, oh Lord, khashyatuk. I fear you. It's not because I disbelieve in you. I fear you. His fear and his ignorance, which I call that man all this time, lethal recipe. If you have fear and ignorance, you worship anything. So because of fear, and nobody told him what you said is kufr, huh? uh, but he said he's monotheistic. Uh, because of his <laughs> ignorance, Allah excused him. He said, Qad So he will go to paradise. So this can be explained as that the souls, or that this will be taken place later on. So the Prophet of Allah is being given like, let me just make it maybe easier for people, like a video clip, uh, a video clip of what's going to take place later on. Uh, a preview, yes, a preview. A trailer, a trailer, <laughs> a trailer. <laughs> no. I don't want to make it like sound like a film or a movie, but a you know, this is Allah is capable of doing everything.
Alhamdulillah. There is everything, a solution for everything. So those people put doubts in the minds of their Muslims. They say, how come this, this in the foul file and the hellfire? And also you could respond to those people who are Mu'tazila. They say, the hellfire and Jannah hasn't been created yet. You know why? Because they say, why Allah can create hellfire and Jannah? Because there's no need for them. That's what they say. And Allah Azza wa Jal, لا يخلق شيء عبثة. عبثة means for nothing. He doesn't want to create for something for, for no purpose. So to them, no, there's a purpose for it. There is a purpose. There's a source. That's number one. Number two, when they are created, they are more of encouraging to us to go to get to paradise rather than hasn't been created. It will encourage us to get to paradise and will make us more fear when we know the hellfire has been created. So for al sunnah al-Jama'ah, al-Nar wal-Jannah makhluqatan, they have been created, walayafnayan, and they will not be ceased to exist. They will be forever. But yes, we have our paradise, as we said before. It's not fully rebuilt. So we have our palaces already been given to us, but Allah gave us as well a land. So there's a land which has already been got trees, and there's a land which is for you to plant it now. Subhanallah, palm tree in your palace. Alhamdulillah, another palm tree in your palace. So Allah giving you as well a land to plant it while you are, but already your destiny is there. Whether it is 50, pla- 50 trees or 900 trees, but no way, regardless of what you're going to think, what is your palace in paradise, it's not going to be what is the reality of that. Never heard, never seen, because you didn't see, you didn't see something like in paradise. Why they call Jannah here, Jannah to dunya? That's nothing. Paradise to dunya is nothing. Paradise to the akhirah is something. So the one who goes into the minimum level, which is the last person who comes out of the hellfire, last person, he enters and he's been given something. He thinks that nobody in the world had been given the same thing as being given. Subhanallah. The last person, when he enters paradise, he thinks that he's on top of the world. Allah gave him something distinguishable from everybody. So he will not have an envy. Oh, I wish I could be a, you know, on the top level. No, oh, he is in that level. He thinks he's, a, he's the best on top of the world. You know, when you have here somebody who's got a Porsche and you have got a bicycle, oh, you know, uh, start envying. There's nothing in paradise like that. <laughs> nah. So, alhamdulillah. So, you enter, you ask the Firdaus al Ala, huh? the Firdaus al Ala, the highest point, but any place in Jannah is but you ask the best. You ask for the best. You, you might get it. Don't say, I'm not going to get it because I don't really come to the Jannah all the time. Just ask the Firdaus al Ala, always. Be greedy, ya khawar. Uh, be greedy. Best thing is to be greedy, your dua. Now, have any questions? Fadhali Ya Faisal. Yalla Ya Faisal, now your chance. There will be a punishment, but do we know what the specific punishment for the one who commits minor shirk? Do we know the punishment? No, we don't know the punishment. What is the commit shirk? The minor shirk, is as amongst the scholars, is a difference of opinion. Is it under the will of Allah, he might forgive it, or it's not? Because Allah said, Inna Allah la Allah does not forgive any person committing shirk. Here, shirk, major and minor is included. Shaykh Salman Taymiyyah, he says, even the minor will be punished. But it's not going to be like the major for eternal. So what type of punishment? Allahu A'lam. I don't like to go to the even the lightest punishment, which is to burn in coal underneath my feet, where my brains is going to boil like the mirjal or kumkum, which is like a boiling cauldron. You know, imagine, I don't want to be like this. A kettle. Even this is the lightest one, which is Abu Talib. Abu Talib, by the way, is in the hellfire. Am I allowed to curse Abu Talib? A'udhu Billah. You can't curse. You cannot curse an individual in the Kaaba. It's not from Ahlul Sunnah to say, may Allah curse Abu Talib. Abu Talib, he helped the Prophet. Abu Talib, he had helped the Muslims. Abu Talib, Abu Talib, he was a good Kafir, but he is in the hellfire. He will not come out of the hellfire. And the Prophet, he had his. Uncle Al Abbas, whom he loves, the uncle who's a Muslim, asked the Prophet of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, didn't you help, you know, like, you know, help, help your intercede for your uncle, which is Abu Talib? He didn't say, you didn't kill him, you didn't curse him. No. So he said, verily, he was in the hellfire, and I put, I, for my intercession, put him in the shallow fire. Shallow fire. The Hbah, the Hbah, shallow fire. And underneath him is a two burning coal. Uh, two burning coals. So that's the minimum. And you want, you know, I, I, that, that's a big favor from the big hot heat to the smaller heat. It is the hellfire, but it is different. You know, e- even the people of the hellfire, they will start asking, just a bit of water. And you bless you one day. Just decrease that hellfire uh, heat one day. Okay? They will ask for that. That is for them is something, but they will not. 
they will not be granted. Now, what is that from Allah? A niche? Oh, you have somebody here? Um, the people of Arab, the people in Jannah, or the, or the people of the Arab, the result, the end is going to be in Jannah. People of the Arab in the middle. Al Araf is like a fence between hellfire and Jannah. And all they will be looking at the people of Jannah, but Allah will make the Kulla Masurifat Wujuhum. Every time they will turn to the hellfire, they don't want to be turning. You see it? Okay? So they will see the people of Jannah and they see the people of hellfire. But Allah, as for this mercy or the intercession of the Prophet, especially said of our Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, from his intercession for the believers, that those people of the Araf will enter Jannah. So they're not going to. They're not going to go be in the middle all the time. No, there's no camps. It's either Jannah or Helpa. At the beginning, there will be some sort of, uh, but later on, either this or that. And then there is, then the, the death will be slaughtered. Huh? No, no, no. It's the people of Araf is in Jannah. Definitely. But they will be, I mean, you don't want to be there to look at the people of the hell. But imagine you could see somebody being toasted. I would believe in the dunya, you can't take it. You can't take that. Hell far. You don't want to look at it. Now, anybody else? Well, the question, Taib Ikhwani. Anish, the last question. Fadal. I'm supposed to finish about 15 minutes ago. Fadal. Yalla, Anish. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, no yeah. topic is that all right? Huh? You ask a question. Does, uh, does... I said non topic is that okay? It's okay, go on. Zakhlaka. I have a very specific question. Um, I know for a uh, for a girl baby born, it's uh, one akika. Can I add an extra akika to another masjid, which is a Salafi Newly masjid? Born, I just female, don't want to split them. Is that female permissible? Or male? Newly born male or female? Female, he said. It's a female, yeah, niche, yes? Sorry. It's a female, yeah, niche. That's out. Fem female, female, yes. Yeah, female is one. Can you make another one? You are allowed to make another one as long as it is not mubaha, not to be showing off. No problem. You could make five, you wish. But the one is required. But if you want to give another one, exactly. but not to show off that you are rich and all of that, and no, you want to give one, for example, into your... Uh, here, which is the sunnah, where people, your mother, your wife can eat and all you can eat as well, and one in your uh, poor country, if you wish. Zuhra. No. Zuhra. If you are studying the Quran, are you allowed to make notes in it in pencil? You mean on the Quran itself? No, I don't. I don't yes. I don't like that. Keep away. Just in the easy. margin. In the margin, you put. But I am just saying, be careful because you fold the Quran and somebody else as they. In the margin, maybe. But I, this is not. This is like humility in the Quran. See the Quran. You could just have a, for example. Section that, keeps cutting out. Uh, I would say if it's an English Quran, no problem. But Arabic Quran, don't do that. English in translation. Translation is no problem. But keep away from the Arabic one. Now, as for Anisha, just to remind you as well, when I said to you, you could slaughter another one. Don't start the intention is to be aqiqah. This is an extra, but the aqiqah is the only one. The other one is just because you want to feed more people. That's no problem, alhamdulillah. But I don't want to take that as a sunnah for other people to follow you as well and to start slaughter more than what they're supposed to do. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa subhanakallam bihamdik. Ashadu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu alaykum.